Hey there, welcome back. Alex Lyon here. And today we're talking about Schutz's theory on groups. He talks about inclusion, control, and affection. And we are working out of Bibi and Masterson's book on communicating in small groups. So really this is an introductory level to this theory. Well, let's get into the details. So there are three basic needs that influence how people form and interact in groups, inclusion, control, and affection. So let's unpack each of these. We all have a need for inclusion, and groups can help us to some extent fulfill that need that we have to belong. Groups help us fulfill a desire to be recognized and understood by other people. Some of us express inclusion, and some of us merely desire it, but aren't really quick to express it. So for example, I have noticed that some people around me are very quick to invite or include other people proactively. They might say, hey, we're going to get a coffee. Do you want to come for the walk? Or we're having a party. Come on over the house. They are expressing inclusion. Other people may want it, but they are not really the first ones to do the inviting. They like to be invited. They wanted to be invited, but they didn't throw a party themselves, right? They're waiting. People like this might say, well, nobody ever calls me when they're having a party. And you say, well, do you ever have a party? Do you ever pick up the phone first and, and make that call? And they'll say, well, no. See, that's the difference. They're both desiring inclusion. One person is expressing it. The other person is merely desiring it. The next variable is control. We all have a need for control. Some measure of control over ourselves and others is beneficial, which is why control is always at play in one way or another. Now, when I grew up, the word control is kind of a, a dirty word. I didn't like it, but it is in some ways, some measure of it is important and necessary. And just like inclusion, some people are more likely to express control and are comfortable leading and managing other people and managing processes. Other people desire that guidance more so than express it. They want other people to give them direction and manage the situation. I talk a lot about leadership in my classes, in my workshops, in my books, in my videos, and inevitably someone will say, well, I don't want to be a leader. I want someone else to carry that. And so some people just desire other people to, quote, control them. Now that word itself, I think, has shades of meaning, but here we're talking about it in a relatively positive way, if that's possible. So we see this play out, though. There's no denying that some people are in dominant roles and some people are in more submissive roles in a group situation. There's just no way around seeing that. The other need, the third one, is that we all have a need for affection. We need affection, and that drives us in various ways to be around other people and receive that in some way. So some people, again, are natural caregivers who express lots of affection, and that's easy for them to do. And other people will sit back, and even though they desire it, they'll wait for someone else to break the ice and express affection to them. So I like to think of this as some people are just natural huggers. Like if they see you, their arms go up and they're like, hey, and they're just ready to express that affection. I know many people like that. Other people will enjoy maybe receiving a hug, but they're not the one to break the ice on that. They're desiring. So just like the other variable, some people are more likely to express this and some people will sit back and just desire it. So there's a little more to the story here according to Schutz's research, and that is that this is tied to group development. So our groups at the beginning, in the initial stages, tend to focus on inclusion needs so that people get together and we wanna make sure everybody's involved and included. And then as the group starts to work on things, there's a bit more of a wrestling over control. So who's gonna be a leader? who's gonna be a follower, what roles are we gonna play? As that conflict gets settled, we go into the affection stage where people relax a little bit and they begin connecting more and expressing positive feelings and affection toward each other. It's also a cyclical pattern according to Schutz's research and that means that anytime you have some new group members, a new project or something changes, some issues are happening, the group essentially reboots and begins to feel like there's a new starting point and it goes back into that pattern where there's, you start over at inclusion, go to control, and then affection. So question of the day, how do you stack up with these three concepts? Are you expressing lots of inclusion or just merely desiring it? Do you express control and you like to be a leader or do you prefer to be a follower? And on affection, are you like a hugger quick to break the ice? 
or are you more likely to wait till someone else does that, but you still enjoy it? I would love to hear your comments about how you line up with these three concepts in that section below the video. So thanks, and I will see you soon.